What's up, fragrant world? Welcome back to another Stay Fresh production. My name is JC. On this channel, Stay Fresh Productions, we do talk about everything fragrance related. If you have any interest in that kind of content, and I assume you do because you're here, then please consider subscribing. Join the Fresh Squad here on YouTube. Hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you get notified every time I upload. And please hit the like button. That shows me and YouTube that you like this kind of content and it really does help with the visibility of my videos across YouTube. So really appreciate that. Thank you in advance. Today I'm bringing you five fragrances that in my opinion, my humble opinion, you should know about. We have quite a variety here. We have some regular designer stuff. We have some niche stuff. We have some indie stuff. We have a surprise here, something that I'm brand new to. And it comes from somewhat of an unlikely source, but it's actually a very beautiful fragrance. And we'll get to that. So let's dive right in. This first one up, this is from an indie brand based out of Arizona here in the United States. Uh, the brand is called Icon de Parfum. And they sent me two of their fragrances. I'm going to talk about one here. You may have seen one or two other reviews on this, if at all. But no one's really talking about it yet because it's pretty new. I think Ross over at TLTG talked about them. But this is a really great scent that they have. It's called Glass Quartz. And you can see the name is etched in the back here. It's actually on the back, so it comes through as the front. And what you see on the front here is the actual logo of the brand. I'm not sure what the logo means or is, but it is a very distinctive logo and I like how they put it into the glass here. So I'm gonna spray this on. This is a relatively simple fragrance in terms of the profile. It kind of has a bit of a designer appeal to it, to be honest, but it smells really good. I'm getting a little bit of alcohol up front. So we let that dry a little bit. This is, it's fresh, very fresh. To my nose, like almost grassy fresh, but it has a sweetness to it. I think it's mostly characterized by tonka bean and mandarin orange. If there's more to it than that, I'm not sure. I'm sure there's more to it than that, but on the website, they don't tell you much about what's in the fragrances. They just say tonka bean and mandarin. It smells really wonderful. It's sweet, but it's not a gourmand by any means. It is mostly fresh and citrusy, but again, there's kind of almost this green grassy nature to it, to my nose. Really easy to wear, very versatile. I'd say it's mostly a, a, a casual fragrance, but it just simply smells good. And this is not gonna break the bank. I wanna say you can get this bottle. I think this is a 50 mil bottle. There's really no labeling on it for that. Uh, this is all independently bottled and everything and created. So I think you can get this bottle for maybe 40 bucks, something like that. It's not bad at all. I'll have links down below to check it out. They have another fragrance, which I'll talk about at another time. It's also really nice and quite unique. But this one I'm talking about is Glass Quartz. Check out the brand in general. Again, link down below. Okay, up next here. This is from a well-known niche brand based out of France. And the brand is called L'Artisan Parfumeur. You might be familiar with them. I think I've talked about this fragrance once before. I got this back in the spring. I've only worn it a couple times. I do have to kind of be in the mood for it because it's not a very complex scent, but it is very particular. So I have to be in the mood for it, but it's really beautiful. I'm really excited to spray it here actually now. This is called Bucolique de Provence. Get some light on that. Okay, so you don't hear about this one very much. I don't remember the name of the collection that this comes from, but these like blue labels, I think are a slightly more expensive collection. So this is not cheap. Uh, I think you can find it on FragranceNet. That is where I got this one. I'll have links down below if you wanna check it out. If I remember correctly, this is Iris, Leather, and Lavender. And that's pretty much it. Yeah, it's like a very soft, supple leather note with a little bit of a waxy iris and an aromatic lavender. It's pretty simple, but it comes together in a really beautiful blend. Everything is very harmonious here. Yeah, it's almost milky smooth leather with a freshness, a slight sweetness, but not really. 
really beautiful, very natural smelling if you're asking me. This is like an everyday scent. This is perfectly unisex. It is quite elegant though, a little bit on the elegant side. Clean, smooth, a little bit, you know, aromatic and definitely a little leathery. Really nice stuff. You should check this one out if you haven't. A lesser talked about fragrance from the house. Okay, up next, we have a forgotten fragrance from the house of Bulgari. There's been numerous flankers on this, but this is the original from 2010, perfumed by the great Alberto Morillas, who has perfumed all of them, as far as I'm aware. This is the original Bulgari man. Bulgari, I think is what they say, some parts of the world. This is actually a pretty complex fragrance. I have it sprayed here. I'm gonna respray it. The one thing you wanna keep in mind with this guy, it's not very strong. I'm just gonna tell you that right out the gate, this is not gonna last very long. It's not gonna project very well, but it smells beautiful. I mostly get honey, a sweet honey, but with like a fresh, aqueous violet leaf note. There's even a little bit of pear fruitiness right at the top, but it doesn't last very long. It's a little fresh with bergamot too. And there's vetiver in the heart that comes through right away and it actually kind of takes over the scent as the scent dries. Gosh, it's so unique. This is a unique fragrance. Nothing really smells like this. I haven't smelled the extreme version, which I'm actually very interested in. I don't know if it smells anything like this or if it's a more intense version. I would hope it is because I think I would want this to be a little bit more intense, but it smells wonderful. It is fresh. It has that honey sweetness. It has the pear, but the violet leaf is really what makes it a little different. If you're familiar with violet leaf in things like Dior Fahrenheit and things like Narciso Rodriguez for him and niche fragrances like uh, Ganymede from Marc Antoine Barjois, those kind, that kind of violet leaf is almost metallic. It is fresh. It has an unusual quality to it, an unusual herbaceousness that kind of sets this apart. Beautiful fragrance, definitely worth checking out and it is not that expensive. I will have links down below to Bulgari Man. Okay, here at the second spot here, I have reviewed this fragrance. As soon as I review it, I will leave the link to the review up in the corner. Let me spray it first here. I love this stuff and this as per the name of the review, which you'll see up here, this is an unusual compliment getter. Oh, wow. This is called Brivido de la Caccia from Argos. With this beautiful design, as they all have, with this plaque. This is Artemis here, goddess of the hunt, with the stag and all that. Gosh, this is, man. So this fragrance is, Wow, it's so green. It is so green. You get a lot of juniper berry in here. It has a sharpness to it. There's a green mate, which is pretty prominent, but it does have a little bit of vanilla in here, which helps to sweeten it up, keep it from getting too sharp. I think there's also some leather as it dries down. There's even some tonka bean, I think, and maybe some amber that adds some warmth. Brivido de la Caccia is Italian for thrill of the chase. Talking about, I think, Artemis, bathing in the woods, being spied on by some mortal. She finds out, she catches him and then sends her dogs after him to eat him. So, thrill of the chase. This is so nice and it's unusual. It might be a little bit hard to appreciate at first sniff, but you would be amazed at what it does in the air, what it does to people around you. It does draw people in. It gets people's attention. It is quite potent. It's gonna project very nicely. It's gonna last a good while as they all do. Great quality, beautiful blend, very unique and very interesting scent profile that is a great balance of, again, different but appealing. So I definitely would recommend checking out Brivido de la Caccia as well as the entire Argos line. I do have a code FRESH10 to get you 10% off a purchase. You can get their sample pack which has all five of their fragrances take 10% off of the price and you're taking your first steps into the world of Argos and then you'll probably end up getting the bottle because it is that good. They're all really that good. But I do love this one. This is one that most people probably won't gravitate to or talk about, but I'm going to tell you, don't sleep on it. Check it out. Brivido de la Caccia. Okay, this last one up. 
This one has a little bit of a story behind it and I gotta admit I'm not super familiar because there's a lot of pieces to put together with it that were kind of lost in translation to me, like literally. <laughs> this comes from Poland, okay? And this fragrance is actually a part of the face of a beautiful organization in Poland called, I'm gonna try my best to say this, I'm gonna read this from the box here. Wielka Orkiestra Świątecznej Pomocy. I think I did okay there. I think that translates to the Great Orchestra of Christmas Charity. I think it's the largest uh, non-governmental, non-profit uh, charity organization in Poland. They've been around since the early 90s and they help raise money for geriatric and elderly care. And every year they organize the largest open air festival in Europe, which is called the Poland Rock Festival. And it's a huge, huge festival. It's a big deal over there. And this fragrance is kind of meant to bring those worlds together. It does represent music. You'll see the box. I'll show you the bottle here in a second. And it has an interesting story behind it. It's supposed to depict being at the festival. The blue skies, the fresh air, crisp air, and then as it, the show goes on, things warm up, and, and as the night comes, things settle down and they become calm. This is the bottle here. I do like it. It's a very simple design, just a black bottle, kind of reminiscent of your, you know, Encre Noir from La Lique or something like that. It does have a wooden cap. Okay, simple, simple bottle. Uh, we have the, uh, the logo here, also here on the front, beautifully kind of stamped there. And we're gonna spray this. This is kind of unusual, but it reminds me of a few fragrances, one of which I don't actually like, but I love the facet of it here. Wow, okay. So we got grapefruit, we got pepper, there's nutmeg, we have some rose and heliotrope. We got labdanum, vetiver, patchouli, and oud. So you get a bright citrusy opening with kind of a spicy floral heart, and it does dry down to a, a warm woody base. So what I'm primarily getting out of this, at first spray you get a little bit of that freshness from the grapefruit. But immediately there is that kind of almost vanillic almond quality of heliotrope, which almost makes it a little creamy. And then patchouli, those two things, pow, patchouli and the heliotrope are like right there, this creamy earthiness behind the freshness. It's a little unusual. It's a pretty damp and almost bitter patchouli. I think the vetiver is in there too, adding to this slightly bitter earthy quality, but it's beautiful. And trust me, as you wear it on the skin, it really smooths out. Once that labdanum comes in to warm things up, it rounds out the edges, it gets real milky smooth. This reminds me of a mix between two fragrances. It reminds me of Effing Fabulous from Tom Ford mixed with Noir from Tom Ford. Both Tom Ford fragrances, if I remember correctly, Noir is characterized by lots of rose and patchouli, maybe some spices. I don't quite remember. I actually did review it years ago. I did not give it a good review. It's a very unusual scent, it's very powdery, earthy. It's kind of strange, but a lot of people do like it. It is elegant. Mixed with this like creamy smoothness of effing fabulous, which has a lot of orris in it. It has tonka bean, leather, I think maybe lavender. It's kind of like those two worlds together, but it does make for a fairly unique scent profile all of its own. And again, as it dries, it is a gorgeous fragrance. So I'm really loving this. This was sent to me by a good friend of mine who is Polish and they wanted me to just get my nose on this fragrance. And I smelled it. I wasn't expecting much. I thought it was gonna be just kind of simple and fresh, but I was thoroughly surprised. I had to include it in this video. I had to tell you about it. I'm not sure how readily available it is for you guys outside of Europe, but I'm gonna link to them down below nonetheless to see if maybe possibly you can get your hands on it. I can't make any guarantees, but I wanted to get this on your radar. This is already getting good. Really, really beautiful stuff. So those are five fragrances that I think you should know about. And obviously you now know about them because I've told you about them, but the next step would be to actually get your nose on them. So once again, I'll have links to everything down below. If you do like this video, then tell me, show me. Hit that like button, I really appreciate it. I wanna know if you've tried any of these fragrances. Probably the most popular one would be the Bulgari 
So let me know if you've tried that. Otherwise, just tell me your thoughts about this list. I'd love to know. You know how it goes. Let's talk about it. Thank you so much for tuning in. Peace. I'll see you in the next one.